Welcome back to my channel. It's Marina here and as always I'm excited to be coming to you in a new video. If it's your first time here, you're welcome. My name is Marina. I make videos from Saskatoon in Canada and on my channel I share information to make settling into life in Canada seamless for newcomers and foreign trained professionals. So do well to hit the subscribe button below and turn on the notification so you know every time I upload new content. To my returning subscribers, welcome. Always such a pleasure to have you here. You guys, what do you think about my mic? What do you guys think about my new mic? Is it giving podcaster extraordinary vibes? Yeah, that's exactly the point. It's supposed to give you that kind of vibes. <laughs> anyway, this mic is from Maono. It's one of their podcast mics. I'm going to leave a link in the description box for you guys to go check out. I have a full unboxing of this mic. You guys are going to be seeing it in my next vlog. It's not connected right now. I just wanted to come and show you guys for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you're a content creator, you're a podcaster, this mic is going to give you what it should be given. The link is going to be in the description box, so do well to check it out, okay? Today's video is a bit of a spin-off. Should I call it a spin-off or like a follow-up of a video that I did a couple of weeks ago? And in that video, I was giving um, general advice. It was our family meeting buzz those video do you guys remember in that video i was given general advice that i think newcomers immigrants to the canadian workplace need to pay extra attention to so, so they are not getting into trouble and that video sparked a lot of conversations which i totally appreciate i like the fact that it made people start to talk and i got a lot of feedback from that video one set of people were reporting themselves to me which part of the video hit them which stray bullet hit them for some people they were sending me screen shots of um, invites, team hangout invites that they had finally accepted after they watched that video. Some set of people were sharing their experiences with me, just letting me know that, oh, now I see I made this mistake and these were the consequences. One set of people were like, well, I tried it and it worked against me. Like the feedback was completely mixed. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a follow up. That video was supposed to be a two part video from the start. So I'm glad that it triggered the kind of responses that it did. Uh, so today I'm going to be doing the follow-up to that video and I'm going to be talking about what you can do or what you should do if you find yourself in a toxic workplace in Canada. Now while I am making this video specific to Canada, the tips I'm going to be sharing are useful to you regardless of the country that you live in and it will be relevant as well. So if you want to learn more about this, you know what to do, definitely keep watching. <music> feedback that I got from the previous video, the bone of contention seemed to be around two major areas. The first one was about difficult bosses. Like I don't know how I try all these things with my bosses and it still didn't work. Like what do I do if I'm saddled with a difficult boss? And the second issue seemed to be around, I go out to team hangouts and all they do is talk about other people. Like I cannot stand the gossip. That's why I don't go. So today I'm going to be talking about these two areas when you're dealing with a difficult boss and when you're dealing with office gossips. So let's start with the bosses, guys. <sighs> unfortunately, unfortunately, this is not an area that any one of us has control over, except you are the boss in question. Um, as a newcomer, as a new, um, as a new employee in the organization, I mean, the first set of months you're you're spending learning the office way of doing your job. No matter how much experience you're bringing, you're going to have to learn the way it is done in that organization. And part of what you do as a new employee in an organization is also building relationships and finding out how you can get along with people. If you now come to the point where you realize that okay, something doesn't sit right. My boss is very difficult to please. I don't seem to do anything right with this boss how can i manage that the first thing that i would suggest anybody does in that situation is to have a conversation with their bosses especially if that's somebody that you work with on a daily basis the person is heavily involved in your day-to-day -day activities you want to have a conversation with them it doesn't have to be a formal conversation it can be like a coffee chat just to ask them like hey so how am i doing so far are there any expectations that you have that has not been properly communicated is there something that i'm doing that you would like me to change do you have alternative ways you like me to do certain certain things, especially the things that they always seem to um, complain about, go to them and ask for help. 
it is not very likely that the boss will tell you you're doing everything right but it will be difficult for no reason because at the end of the day difficult bosses no matter how difficult they are they are human as well and everybody who's human has a place where they can crack so the responsibility will now lie on you to try to find that way find how do i get across to this person in what way can i pass the message so that this person understands that's not supposed to be your responsibility as an employee on a normal day but we're not in an ideal world and sometimes in less than ideal situations you will have to find alternative ways to get the job done so that there can be sanity in your life so for me as an employee if i have a difficult boss yes i will have that conversation with them to find out what are the expectations you have that have not been properly communicated communicated guys there's something that i need us to stop and understand so think about it as an immigrant to canada chances are you have more than one degree you have many years of experience because right now with how competitive the express entry pool is they are taking the best of the best like the most competitive applications are the ones coming here so if you came here as a permanent resident within the last two years you were the best of the best where you're coming from think about it like that for some people you left your home country many many years ago you have lived in two other countries before you moved to Canada so you're coming with a lot of education you're coming with a lot of certifications you're coming with global experience you're coming with exposure for multiple countries you now come and join this organization well the Canadian factor happened you could not get a role that was commensurate to the experience and the education you have so you had to take something lower and then you realize that the person that you report to probably had just has just a bachelor's degree has never lived outside of, of the province where your office is do you not think that the kind of exposure and the experience and the things you bring can be a bit intimidating? People handle things like that very differently. For some other bosses who are more open-minded, they would leverage on your education, your experience, your exposure to the benefit of the team. But for some other bosses who are more narrow-minded, they are going to be threatened by that. And sometimes the only way they know to exert the authority is to now become very strict about showing you who the boss is that's why you now have things like micromanaging they want to know what you're doing they want to be in your every meeting they want to be co copied in every correspondence behind the scene of those micromanagers there's a reason and more than half the time fear can be a reason the fear of this person is more educated this person is more exposed this person probably has the same experience that i have but they have extra certifications that i don't this person can take my job it becomes a factor of fear so we cannot remove that it's not your fault that you are exposed it's not your fault that you're educated but people respond to these things differently if you find yourself in that kind of situation pipe down pipe down that's the time where you want to try to earn the trust of your boss you want to try to earn their trust and let them know that look i'm here to do my job and my job only i'm not interested in your job even if you are that's not the time to now rub it in their faces when you go to meetings you don't want to make your bosses look bad or start to reference previous experience from other countries that you know they cannot relate to even though you know the answer to certain things in some meetings let them shine every boss wants employees that will make them look good in public so if you are the one who will constantly give examples or say things that will make your boss look like they are foolish they are going to resist you that's the truth that is the truth you're going to earn their trust find a way to earn their trust find the things that they like listen when they're talking learn about them their birthdays their children their pets so on monday when you come back to work ask them how was your weekend how was this person call the names let them know i am listening guys see this thing that we're talking about is almost like ah, it's too much work can i not just go to work and mind my business but the truth is the bosses that you work with have the potential to either destroy your career or to push you to the next level you know what they say that people don't leave bad organizations they leave bad bosses the people that you answer to have such an influence over how much you rise and how your careers turn out especially within that organization so you want to find a way to make sure you are amicable with your bosses find a way around it sometimes you are going to do the work and your boss will take the glory and you are going to shut up your mouth about it <laughs> yes sometimes other people take the glory for what we do and it's absolutely okay nobody can take your knowledge away from you at the end of the day i've learned i learned this thing in hard ways really hard ways where it's like but i'm the one that did the work sometimes other people will take the glory and that's fine there's an african proverb that says that sometimes when you want to eat meat you are going to have to learn to call the cow uncle <laughs> because you know what you're aiming for so if letting the boss take the glory for work that you have done is the price that you have to pay to make sure there's sanity at work and prepare you for that next level 
by all means do it it's a small price to pay trust me for some people it is that i'm a man my boss is female and you don't realize how you come across unfortunately that thing still shows up at work there are still a lot of organizations where there's not a lot of female representation in senior leadership so there's that animosity of the women who are leaders feel like people are going to undermine them because they are women and more than half the time some of you guys you don't realize how you do it but you actually do when your boss says one thing and then you feel like you have a better idea instead of going back to run your idea to say hey i kind of thought about this do you think we can try this a little differently you go ahead and implement your own idea it is not just going to come across like you are undermining your boss that whole thing of you are a man and the woman it's going to show up and you want to be very careful how you come across you want to be very careful put your ego put your pride in check for a woman if you're a woman and is that woman woman I answer to a woman women are very difficult to live with check those biases you know at the end of the day it's just to find a way to speak the language that your boss understands and if you have tried all of this and it still doesn't work or when you start to dust your resume it is time <laughs> It is time to actually start to apply to other places. As much as I would like to tell you to pack your bag and just go in, there are other things you can try. This is where networking comes in. Look for other professionals who are doing like your work in other organizations and talk to them. That's the truth. I belong to a couple of um, groups like that. There are a lot of WhatsApp groups now that have like bankers, like project managers, like IT, like HR. There are many WhatsApp groups. Find, look for somebody who's doing the kind of work that you're doing and find out if there are groups like that. Because on a daily basis in some of the groups I'm in, I see questions like that. Okay, I'm dealing with this situation. What would you do if you were in my case? And people will, sh will share ideas. Sometimes people come back and say, okay, I impl implemented this and it worked. There's nothing that you're dealing with with your boss that you are the only one who has ever dealt with that so chances are somebody has dealt with that and they found a way around it okay so that's what you want to pay attention to that's the importance of networking ask all these questions and if you try everything and your boss still just wants to make your life difficult look for another one another job will come that's the truth one other thing that you can consider is to start to look for projects that are outside your primary team if you work in organizations where they have like committees where they ask people to volunteer to do stuff different from their regular day-to-day -day work you want to consider doing that as well so that you can work with other people and you can show your expertise somewhere that does not have the direct influence of your boss in it and that's kind of what I would say with bosses it's very hard to give like a one-size-fits-all solutions be solution because it's not a it's not a one-size-fits-all some situations are more peculiar than others but I just feel like these are general tips that you can try to just make things a little more amicable and a little more civil with the people that you answer to find a way to speak the language you understand everybody wants to feel seen everybody wants to feel heard everybody wants to be valued everybody wants to be respected including your boss so put all of this in mind when you're dealing with them and try to touch their human side look at them if you if it's their birthdays sometimes just send thank you notes if it's their birthday send messages just pay attention pay attention really and i think that yeah to an extent that will help again if you have tried all of this and for no reason this boss just wants to make your life difficult it might be worth it to start to look for employment elsewhere and guys the other area that people seem to have struggles with is the office gossiping like I go out with my team members and all they do is talk about other people or I go out with my team members we all have conversation and it's what I said that became the problem or just stuff like that first of all guys office gossip is not going to go away that's the truth it's a part of office politics that will not change the only thing that can change is how you choose to respond to it so yeah office gossip in itself i feel like it's a bit relative it's not everything that colleagues gather to talk about that always end up as a bad thing so i would say it's what is being talked about and how it is presented there are some times where people present a problem other people chime in and it leads to like an outcome in the end that problem could have other people in it it could have other situations in it i've been in a position before where i was a newcomer on a team and there was a particular person that i struggled with i didn't fully understand the person i didn't know how to get to the person it just didn't seem like everything i said to that person was wrong that's how that's the impression i got and then I was in a group of other people group with other people and someone else not me said the same thing and said you know i'm actually struggling with this person and my head raised up like yeah so i'm not the only one and other people laughed about it and then said you know this person we all struggled as well this is what you do this is what you do if you want to get to the person this is how to relate with them so even though that conversation was about this other person 
it led to a constructive outcome because at the end of the day the person who raised it and me who was also in the same situation we found better ways to deal with that person so even though the conversation was about another colleague which technically is gossip just sitting down there and talking about another person it's all actually office gossip but it led to a productive outcome sometimes it can be about bosses it can be about bosses when colleagues gather like five of us report to the same boss and i am struggling with getting along with the boss like the example i gave previously if you're struggling with getting along with bosses who can say stuff that will make you think oh okay so that's something i can try to maybe improve my relationship with this person so where it becomes where i think it becomes bad is if you just put somebody on the chopping block and you're just shredding the person for no reason if that's what's happening what i have done in the past is maybe if it's a group of people that i cannot call out i just shut down not say anything else in the conversation sit down keep quiet and then when i get a chance i change the conversation i've done it many times and then there have been other times where in the middle of the conversation i just said you know i don't think we have enough information to come to the conclusions that we're coming to right now and besides it's our personal business not our business i think we should walk away and leave that I change the topic immediately or just shut it down to say actually I'm uncomfortable with the line of this conversation I'm just going to excuse myself and take a break and walk away I've done it more than more than half the time the worst that can happen there is that the next time they want to gossip about other people they don't call you which is absolutely fine that's not it's not it's no longer going to be a factor of you are antisocial it just means she's not going to contribute to the kind of conversations that we want to have and that's absolutely fine if you find out that that is a repeated pattern with groups of people it's okay for you to avoid the group it is okay for you to not show up if you're going to be uncomfortable with the conversations that happen there and if you're ever in a position where you hear them talking bad about somebody where gossip becomes bad is when people start to spread it it's one thing for four people to sit down together and say something where it becomes a bad thing is when those four people now spread it to another four for to other four people and then it just spreads that's when it becomes really messy if anybody comes to you with gossip let that conversation end with you do not spread it shut it down and just do control delete i do that many times there are times where okay it's like team everybody a lot of people are um, on the table together just talking and i can't relate with the conversation that they are they're talking about i just keep quiet not answer smile where necessary if i think okay somebody made a joke that i understand i smile as soon as i'm walking out of there it is delete the conversation is useless to me there's nothing i'm going to do with that information same thing that you can try as well see what i found is gossip usually does not happen with the entire team because there are some things that people don't say in front of the entire team they'll separate like two or three people is this two or three or four people that come together and gossip about other people right chances are gossip will not happen that openly in a big group they usually happen like in, like smaller clusters so if you know that there are notorious people like that who typically when they gather is to talk about other people work with other people in the team navigate your way to other people in the team to see if you can have more con constructive conversations and when you go out like that you really want to be careful what you say even if it's a small group if you notice that you're hanging out with a group of people who are like close like three friends who are very close in the office then they invite you to lunch you are the fourth person those three people are friends chances are if you go and contribute and say bad about people as well they will protect each other and push you under the bus <laughs> that's the truth when you are guys friends will protect themselves you'll be left alone so you have to be careful what you say regardless of the crowd what i do is i tell me ask myself this thing that i'm about to say if they publish it to the whole organization if this thing gets sent out to the whole organization in an email would i be able to defend it if i can't i will not say it i'll wait until i come home and gossip with my husband <laughs> But if you know that you cannot defend it if it becomes public, please don't say it. You can trust people at work, but with wisdom, with wisdom, you cannot say, oh no, but I thought we were friends. I thought I could tell you, be very careful, observe, 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 observe before you trust people with certain kinds of information. If you're not sure, just don't say anything, okay? Well, yeah, that's kind of what I would say about office gossip. It's not going to go away, but that's not to say you go from one extreme because I don't want to gossip you now shut everybody out. There's always a common ground and that is absolutely what I recommend. Well, I hope that you have found this video helpful. If you still disagree with me, please leave it in the comment section. If you have found ways around these things, around like difficult bosses 
or around office gossip and you know a way to deal with it that does not involve shutting everybody out please share that in the comment section as well let us all learn because even me i'm still work in progress like i said in the beginning there's no one size fits all for all these answers it is just going to be a lot of wisdom a lot of emotional intelligence for you to find that common ground that helps you stay civil and amicable with the people that you work with if you have done all of this and you feel like the environment you are in is still very toxic consider alternative employment look for employment somewhere else but if we all run away from situations that are unfavorable at work you will keep running that's why i'm suggesting these things that can help you stay a little more bearable instead of just going straight to if it's toxic run away you can't always run from everything abby thank you very much for watching this video guys i hope you learned a thing or two from it as usual please leave your comments your contributions in the comment section and i'll be on there to engage you as usual if you have not yet subscribed to my channel i am begging you please do well to hit subscribe so that we can continue to grow this family until i come your way in the next video it is marina saying thank you and have an awesome day bye guys